Hell Ocean, my friends, the Heinz Honey and Almond Cream Program. Starring George Burns and Heinz Honey, Gracie Allen, with Frank Parker, Ray Noble, and his orchestra, and Truman Bradley speaking. A hundred million strong, that's right, you can't go wrong, my friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Say, George, did you enjoy the broadcast we were on Saturday night for the Red Cross? I certainly did. It was quite a love scene I did with Edward G. Robinson. You did a love scene with Edward G. Robinson? We kissed for ten minutes. You did? Yeah, then the curtain went up and the show started. (laughs) What's uh, what's Robinson got that I haven't got? Well... Quiet. (laughs) Eddie Robinson put his lips against mine and boy, oh boy, what burning kisses... Burning kisses. Yeah, he forgot to take the cigar out of his mouth. (laughs) Probably smokes his kisses very short. Oh, he does. I thought so, yeah. That was sure great talent on that Red Cross show. Donna Mitchie, Charles Lawton, Paul Muni, Jimmy Cagney. George Burns. Don't change the subject. Pat O'Brien, Austin Gracie, Gracie, what happened to you Saturday night after the show? Where did you disappear to? Come here. Oh, a secret, huh? I, uh, I drove home in a rumble seat with Eddie. With Eddie Robinson? And he put his arm around me. He put his arm around me? Twice. Twice? He has very long arms. <laughs> I've seen Robinson in all of his pictures, and he never puts his arms around a girl. Did you see him in Little Squeezer? <laughs> No, I'm waiting for it to come to my neighborhood drive-in. Listen, when we got home, yes. we parked in front of the house, mm-hmm. and just after I kissed him goodnight, yes. he was held up by two men. He was held up by two men? When I kiss them, they've got to be held up. <laughs> or call for Dr. Kildare. You know, George... Oh, hello, Ray. Hello. I heard your broadcast on Saturday night while having dinner at Frank Parker's house. Did you like it, Ray? All except the soup. I'm, uh, I'm talking about the radio show. Oh, you were very good on the program, George. Especially when you were doing that grocery store sketch. You sounded as full of pep as if you were drinking scotch and soda. Ray, that was Lum and Abner. Well, whatever it was, I keep on drinking it because I've never heard you funnier. <laughs> you, uh, you ought to see me when I've had a couple of Tony Martinis. Uh, Frank, did you hear the show Saturday night? Oh, sure I did. Hello. Hello, Gracie. Uh... How did you like me? Oh, you were great. Colossal. Marvelous. It says here. (laughs) How did that get in the script? Hmm. I really was terrific. You know, that audience laughed every time I opened my mouth. No, you ought to get your teeth fixed. (laughs) I happen to have a beautiful set of teeth. You said it. They're the best money can buy. (laughs) Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, tonight is our last broadcast for Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. Next Monday, we go on a different network for a new sponsor. Yeah, it's all over, George. That's too bad, Gracie. Yeah. Just as I was getting to know that pretty usher, too. Everybody has been wonderful. The people we work with, the radio station, the sponsor. The usher. Uh, past year has been one of the happiest in my life. And now that the time has come for me to leave this program, I'm not ashamed to say that there's a big lump in my throat. Why did you swallow it? I can't. You mean you're afraid it'll spoil your dinner, huh? Yeah, the radio business, what is it? You don't see the people you're entertaining. You work day in and day out with those jokes, jokes, thinking, thinking, struggling for new ideas. Then comes the end of the year and the program is over. And what have you got? A fortune. <laughs> hey, uh, money, money, plane. money. After all, Frank, what can you do with money? Are you kidding? <laughs> Memories, memories, and now it's all over. Yes, it's all over. And, well, I can't go on. I just can't go on. Oh, you must. I can't, George. I just can't. Why not? There's a page missing. (laughs) Memories, memories. Truman, I can remember the first time I met you. Sure enough, George. Was in the Brown Derby having lunch, and it just so happened I needed a fellow like you. Yes, to pay the check. If I remember correctly, Truman, I gave you a contract that day and you took the check. Well, I had to. The contract was written on the back of it. Um, Poor Truman. He doesn't know yet whether he's working for George or the Brown Derby. 
Well, he couldn't work for a sweeter guy. You really mean that, Frank? Oh, sure. I think the guy who owns the brown derby is a swell fella. <laughs> Ah, uh, memories, memories. Oh, oh memories, yes, yes, the good old brown derby where you find directors, picture stars, extras. Extra? Yeah, extra for bread, extra for butter, extra, extra for butter. <laughs> but, Tracy, let's, let's forget all these jokes and wisecracks. You know how I feel. We've been together for some time, and it, I, it feels less, just like one little happy family. And honest, I'm going to miss you all. Would you miss me? <laughs> Ah, memories, memories. <laughs> Come in. Mr. Burns? Yes? I'm going to miss your program. You will? I missed it for seven years, brother, and I'll keep right on missing it. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, memories, memories. Now, quiet. Isn't there somebody on this program who can say something nice about me? Just to make me feel good. Isn't there somebody who can lie a little? Oh, coming over. Oh, boy. thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I say, George, I just received a telegram from a real fan of yours. Really? Yeah, here's what it says. Uh, you can have your Jack Benny's, your Fred Allen's, your Bob Hope. Just give us George Burns. There you are. Signed, the uh, Forest Lawn. <laughs> Ray, Ray, it might be a surprise to Forest Lawn, but I'm not dead. P.S. We can dream, can't we? <laughs> ah, memories, memory. Oh, Quiet. I'll never forget the first day on this program. There was Frank Parker singing a song and winking at a beautiful girl. And I winked right back at him. Yeah. And the nervousness of the first day. There was Ray Noble's band all gathered around him, and Ray was shaking. I can remember his first number. Yes, it was ten, and he made it the hard way. Yeah. And that Truman Bradley. I remember how cute he was in his first audition. I can see him now, standing there with those dimpled cheeks, those short pants. And those long commercials. Ah, oh, memories. <laughs> Do you know what women are saying to each other over card tables and back fences? Get the Heinz Honey and Almond Cream dollar size for only 49 cents. This is the famous Heinz half-price special. The same big family size of Heinz that's always been an economy, even at its regular price. And now at 49 cents, this big bottle of Heinz Honey and Almond Cream is the hand lotion bargain of the year. You save over 50 cents on the bottle. You get over twice the quantity of lotion and what a lotion it is. Extra creamy, extra softening to dry, rough skin. Use Heinz to help soften your hands, soothe sunburned skin, comfort tender skin after shaving. And what's the price? 49 cents, Truman, and I have it. Okay, Gracie. Just enough to get the big dollar bottle of Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. Don't forget, everybody, only a few days left to get the hand lotion special of the year, the big dollar size of Heinz Honey and Almond Cream, for only 49 cents. And now, Frank Parker. Frank sings tonight, Victor Herbert's My Dream Girl. Frank? Smiling lips if you could only answer Oh, lovely eyes if you could only tell Why every single fiber of my being Responds to you as if by magic spell Why do I feel as though I'd always known you what is this thrill of mingled joy and pain? Oh, have we met before through all the ages? And shall we meet and love again someday?
Well, it's beautiful, Frank. And when you're at the Bon Air Country Club in Chicago this summer, we're certainly going to miss you. Oh, stop worrying, George. There are several singers who are just as good as I am. Oh, now you're being modest. No, no, I mean it. Uh, there's Lawrence Tibbett and... Uh... Uh, Nelson Eddy and, uh, and John Charles oh, Thomas. Of course, and... they're good, too. Yes, yeah. they're good. Uh, of course, they'd expect more each week than a pass to the skating rink. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they don't skate. Of course, no. I'll admit, Frank, that for the salary I pay you, I couldn't get Bing Cross. Listen, brother, for the salary you pay me, you couldn't even get one of his records. Is that so? That's so, <laughs> yeah. Oh, now, boy, boy, stop arguing. I, I think Frank is swell, and we're certainly going to miss him, yeah. George. George. What? I've got a new singer. New singer? Yes, he's very good, and he won't cost you so much money either. I suppose he'll work for a pickle. He'll work for anybody as long as he gets paid. <laughs> All right, Gracie, where is this genius of yours? Oh, sitting right there. Come here, Felix. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Burns? Oh, so this is Felix. Uh, what kind of a voice have you got? Uh, are there different kinds? <laughs> well, this is going to be good. Gracie, has he had any experience? Well, every Saturday night he sings in the bowl. In the Hollywood bowl? No, the wash bowl. He can't afford a bathtub. <laughs> Looks like he came to California by drain pipe. <laughs> Gracie, will you let me do my own hiring? And firing, too. Oh, now, please, George. Felix has never ruined a radio show in his life, and all he asks for is a chance. <laughs> well, has he... Was he ever on a radio show? He, he was sponsored on a morning program. Yeah, but what about his voice? Well, that's what the sponsor was mourning about. <laughs> well, go ahead, Felix. Let me hear you sing. No, oh, no, no. Wait a minute. I'm his manager, you know. Uh, how much are you going to pay him? You're discussing salary before I hear him sing? Well, sure, he gets more money that way. <laughs> Turned out to be a unit, Fanshawn and Gracie. Well, go ahead and sing, Felix. You, you, you go to my head And you linger like a refrain Gracie, where did you find him? In Griffith Park? Yeah, under a rock. Under and a I, rock, huh? And I find you spinning my brain In b bubbles of... Champagne. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like the voice of no experience. Oh, is he that good? Yes, he's great. You go home. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> and you sip burgundy brew. <laughs> Kidding, isn't it? No. Last week he had his tonsils removed. And he threw away the wrong part. <laughs> and I find you mansion. In a, a Take a turn, kid. Kicker. <laughs> or, or two. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, yes. The thrill. Uh, Felix, Felix, back up, back up a little bit. The, the thrill. Uh, Felix, the a little, a little father, Felix. The thrill. Just, uh, just one more step, Felix. Well, Truman, I'm sorry that you're not going to be with us this summer, but I'm really happy that you've got that picture deal. Well, thank you, George, and I really want to take this opportunity to tell you how much I've enjoyed working for you for Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. Well, thanks, Truman. And sometime I'd like to try working for you for money, George. <laughs> well, you can't tell, Truman. Sometime maybe you will. No, seriously, George. I want to wish you and Gracie a lot of luck on your new show for Spam, and believe you me, this Monday night, I'll certainly be listening in. And we're certainly going to miss you. Oh, Thanks, George. yes, Truman. We won't know what to do without you, George. What? I've got a new announcer. Uh, you're his manager? Yes. Is he good? Well, the fellow who recommended him thinks he's terrific. Well, who, who recommended him? Felix. Oh, Felix. <laughs> Has he done any announcing? Has he done any announcing? Has he done any announcing? Oh, has he done any announcing? Well, has he? Has he? Yeah, has he? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> uh, come here, Roger. Roger, this is George Burns. Oh. Well, here, Roger, maybe I'm wrong. Read this commercial. <laughs> Ladies and uh, gentlemen, <laughs> do you know what <laughs> women are... <laughs> 
same thing to each other all over. Card table, Get behind some of them down the left. Oh, yeah. cream dollar size for only 49 cents. Uh, this is the famous hand prize. Uh, 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 wait a minute, Mr. Cecil. Cecil. Wait a minute. I've got a TL for you. I can't use you. You're awful. You're terrible. And Gracie, I'll talk to you later. You, 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 don't, you, you don't like me. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard you on the radio too, and you're you, 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 you stingy. You, 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 miser, miser. You, you take that back. <laughs> How do you like that? It took me 15 minutes to say it. No, we won't let you take it back. Oh, get out! Get out! I like that guy. Wasn't that awful? Uh, you don't want him as an announcer, George? No. Too tall, huh? Yeah, he's too tall. your farewell number on this program after two very pleasant years. Ah, memories, memories. That's right, Ray. Well, how do you feel now that you and your boys are finished? Oh, wonderful. This is the first time we've ever finished together. <laughs> I'll sure miss those poker games I had with you boys. Oh, they'll miss them too, George. Wonder what my boys will do now for a living. <laughs> At least, Ray, you haven't made up any funny cracks about the salary I paid you. Oh, what old boys? Nothing to kid about. Oh, thanks. It's nothing to joke about. It's nothing to laugh about. It's just nothing. <laughs> I don't know why you're all picking on me for being cheap. Gracie was with me last night at Cyril's restaurant when I picked up a check for 25 people. Well, that's right. He did. Well, you call that being tight? Well, you would never have done it if you were sober. <laughs> why did I do that? Wasn't that silly of me? Gracie! 
Oh, yes, Bubbo? Well, your things are nearly all packed to move to the dressing room in the new studio. Good. But I had a tough time getting Clark Gable's picture in the trunk. Well, what did you do? I folded his ears. Oh. <laughs> what, uh, what about my picture? I left it on the wall. What for? Just for laughs. I say. Say, Bubbo, did you pack the bowl of goldfish in the trunk like I told you? Yes. You um, packed a bowl of goldfish in the trunk? Well, sure. The goldfish won't be able to breathe. Oh, yes, they will. I made a little hole in the bottom of the bowl. <laughs> well, that takes care of that. But what about the water? Won't it leak out? No. Those goldfish know enough to keep their mouths shut. <laughs> I wish you did. <laughs> Say, Gracie, your trunk is packed so full there isn't any room for your toothpaste. Oh, well, then make room. Just squeeze the paste out of the tube. Yeah. Give you more room. And throw the paste away? No, no. Put it in the pocket of my robe so I'll know where to find it. Yes, hurry, Bubbles, and don't forget to clean out the Frigidaire. I did, and it tasted delicious. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, say, George. Yes, Frank? Well, it's getting close to the end of the program, and we've done a lot of kidding and a lot of clowning, but uh, I want to take this moment to tell you that if in the past two years I've done anything to hurt your feelings, or insult, or ridicule you, I thank you. <laughs> well, that's a fine thing to say. Oh, George, he's only kidding. Frank even chipped in for the farewell present we got you. Present? What, uh, what present? Oh, uh, go ahead, Ray. Now's the time. <coughs> well, at a time like this, it is customary to give one's boss a farewell gift. I know all those things you said before were just a rib. Well, I've prepared a word of presentation, if I may read it, George. Sure, go right ahead, Ray. I'd love to hear it. Well, here's to the boss who's been a big brother. In fact, he's been almost like an old mother. No gift can repay such friendship true with a hey nolly nolly on a hitchy coo. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, beautiful, Ray, but where's, uh, where's the gift? Oh, yes. Yeah, well, where is it, Gracie? Oh, well, I told Frank to get it. Oh, I told Truman to get it. I told Ray to get it. I told Gracie to get it. I though. told Frank to get it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I, minute. I, told, I told. That's a fine how do you do. Well, George, you don't care who buys the gift, do you? I know. Well, then you buy it. <laughs> well, anyway, Ray, I want to wish you and your boys a lot of luck this summer at the Palmer House in Chicago. Thanks, George, and I know your new program for Spam starting this Monday will be a great success. Thanks, and we're certainly going to miss you, Ray. But nobody will miss you like I will. Oh, uh, really? We'll never be able to replace you, Ray, George. Uh, what? I've got a new band leader. <laughs> Rec uh, recommended by Felix? No. Roger. You ought to be a doll. Oh, this fellow's sensational. He's a society band leader. Now, listen, Gracie, now, please, I don't... Please, please, here he is. Randolph, come here. George, this is Randolph Clark. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Clark? Mr. Point, this is a moment momentous to me. <laughs> <laughs> to have the pleasure of wielding the baton for such a well integrated group of artists. <laughs> Where do you find these guys? Houston, you, 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 Houston, Houston, you hear me in New York at the concerts in the park? Houston? No, Houston, no. <laughs> George, George, he plays with one hand. Plays what? Oh, he, he uh, plays with one hand. Plays the piano? Yeah. Oh, he holds his nose with the other. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Excuse me, but my music is never forgotten because in the invited chords of my symphonies, there is always prevalent the undercurrent of perns and counter perns. <laughs> didn't, uh, didn't I see him wrestle last Monday? Yeah, he was the fellow underneath. I thought that was that fellow. Uh... You know, music ain't everything. Is that true? No. But for instance, for instance, yesterday, I was at the art museum scrutinizing prodigiously Whistler's mother. Hmm. And he'll know something, Mr. Point? You shouldn't you wait on me in the greasy vest. <laughs> Most people look at a picture like Whistler's mother and they don't get the full meaning. Hmm. They think it's just a picture of an old lady. Hmm. Well, there's more to it than that. Is that so? Oh, emphatically. Emphatically. <laughs> now, for instance, they don't capture the mood or the thought of the artist. Whistler's mother is more than a picture of an old lady looking out a window. She's thinking. She's, uh, she's what? She's thinking. So are you. I choose to rise above you. A she. Some choose. Well, any, anyway, Whistler's mother's thinking like this in her mind. Where's my boy tonight? What can he be doing? Is he in bad company? Is he maybe out with a broad? Oh, that's it. <laughs> or, or maybe is 
they try to get the one ball in a side pocket. Where is my boy? Where is that ball? Oh, get out! Get out! Now, what do you think of that? Well, uh, George. Wasn't he? Didn't you like him? Like him? No. Too tall, huh? Yes, he's too tall. <laughs> Gracie, we don't need any more talent. We're all set. We've got Artie Shaw and his band. Artie Shaw? And the Smoothies, a grand singing group. Well, they're wonderful, but I'm sure going to miss our bunch. So will I. Well, goodbye, Frank. Goodbye, George and Gracie. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye, Truman. Goodbye, George and Gracie. <laughs> goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Ray. Goodbye, George and Gracie. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Gracie, you do feel very bad, don't you? No. <laughs> no? Then why are you crying? <laughs> My girdle's killing me. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, now that summer's really here, you'll be getting out in the open, playing tennis, swimming, or at least stretching out and sunning yourself. And say, at the first hint of sunburn, be sure to soothe your skin with Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. Heinz Lotion is cooling and comforting and is great for smoothing skin that's rough and scaly from exposure. This fine emulsion is extra creamy, extra soothing, not a bit sticky or greasy. So keep a bottle on hand all summer long to soothe sunburn and keep your hands feeling soft, looking pretty, no matter how much rough outdoor work you do. And don't forget... Heinz Honey and Almond Cream is on sale right now. Now and for only a few days more, you can get Heinz Big Dollar Size for only 49 cents. Can you imagine that? Less than half price. You get over twice as much lotion for your money. It's bargain time for Heinz, so hurry. Stop in at the nearest toilet goods counter and ask for Heinz Half Price Special. Your big opportunity to get this Big Dollar Size of Heinz Honey and Almond Cream for only 49 cents. And now Gracie will sing an oldie again. Take it. <laughs> Johnny Jones, he had a cute little boat, and all the girlies he would take for a float. He had girlies on the shore, sweet little peaches by the score. But Johnny was the Weisenheimer, you know. His steady girl was Flo. And every Sunday afternoon, she'd jump in his boat and they would swim. And then he'd row, row, row. He'd give her, then he'd kiss her now and then. She would tell him when. He'd fool around and fool around, and then they'd kiss again, and then he'd roll, roll, roll. A little further he would roll, oh, 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 oh. Then he'd drop both his balls, take a few more on toes, and then he'd roll, roll, roll. She loved him so, so, so. She never thought of saying no, no, no. He never asked her cause she seemed to understand when he held her hand. And when you have an understanding, why go back to land when you can row, row, row? Oh, you'd be astonished how the time can go, go, go. You don't need a mustache or a barrel of cash. All you need is a boat and you'll cut quite a splash. You don't need any dash or that if you can roll, roll, roll. And now, good night, folks, and goodbye for the summer. Remember, you can have a happier summer with Heinz Honey and Almond Cream, the lotion that's so good and soothing for rough hands, sunburn, chafed skin, and that dry, puffy feeling that comes from doing dishes three times a day. Heinz is extra creamy, extra softening. And now on sale at an extra special price, the big dollar size, only 49 cents for a few days longer. Thank you, Truman. Now I want to thank the Heinz, the, the Heinz Honey and Almond Cream Company and tell them what the grand association this past year has been. And now I want to say farewell. Oh, not me. I'll never say farewell to Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. I've used it ever since I was a little girl, and I'll continue using it until I'm a little girl again. Well, good night, folks. Good night. Truman Bradley saying good night, everybody. Good night, George and Gracie. The song You Can't Brush Me Off is from the Louisiana Purchase. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank <laughs> you.